speak, God damn it. Entertain the troops, monkeys. Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe. With news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. I didn't realize this is our New Year's episode. We so we've done a Christmas episode already. Yeah, that yeah, was last man. week. Oh, shit, they're really close together. How drunk have you been uh, the last two years? I think the problem he's been sobering up. I think he's coming out of this. Uh, no, the no, state. I was a I was a fucking mess the whole weekend. It's been a. Well, we know a, that. We figure that it was a long weekend. I had a gambler show and I had a a comedy show, two comedy shows at the Cap City, and uh, I okay. I indulged in a in an unprofessional way after each one of those things. And I feel like a garbage now. I feel like a, a garbage. garbage. A garbage. One unit of garbage. One unit of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Like it's so well, a banana peel. Yeah. Well, Maybe yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the... Well, that's one of the things I smoked after after <laughs> after the show. Right. Well, you knew, you know, you read the anarchist cookbook, so you knew how to. And before the show, mm-hmm. I was thinking of the oft reference, perfectly formed fish skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Somehow, always in the trash. So, so. Cap City at the the domain area. The domain, uh, yes. Ooh, fancy, Man. yeah, very fancy. Yes, they have Louis Vuitton. They have uh, uh, Goucher, um, Zara, H and M, not just the oh. H. Whoa. What um, about what about Bebe? Do they have Bebe? Bebe they they've, they've got the kids and they've got the adults. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you were going to let that go by. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about Bebe's kids is they are immortal. They do not die. Mm-hmm. They simply multiply. I'm glad we could make a reference to a 1990 cartoon no one saw and no one remembers. A lot of people remember. <laughs> oh, they remember. Robin Harris's animated film, Bebe's Kids. He, now, he died before that came out, right? I think so. Yeah, it's real tragic. He he died mm-hmm. way too young. He's very funny. That I will I will concur with. Baby's kids. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember that it was kind of weird. Like the ads for this animated movie were like, like it was like half animated, the half shots of the movie and half shots of just him doing stand up. Yeah, and him like just screaming, "Baby's kids." <laughs> <laughs> Is the movie really that? Is it half and half like that? I've never seen it. No, no, no. The movie is entirely animated, but okay. the, the ad campaign. And I'm always like fascinated by weird ad campaigns yeah. for mm-hmm. movies. Uh, like my favorite, uh, um, this is this uh, typifies it. Like when people are trying to sell a movie, but they don't exclusively use stuff from the movie. Um, you know, because sometimes I'll have a guy go like, this holiday season, I think I've got a special movie for you. It used to be, a long time ago, it used to be a real common thing. Like, the movie trailer would be, uh, you know, like, Robert Evans walking through, like, <laughs> like you know, the set of, like, the, the Godfather and going like, this holiday season, I've got a very special movie for you. It's not, not the kind of movie you normally it's going to come out on Christmas. This one's called the Godfather. And then no, 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 no. it'll show a couple things and it'll cut back to him, like looking at the camera, going, like, that's right, this is a Hollywood soundstage. But um, my favorite weird uh-huh. uh, movie was the ad campaign for the movie Ghost Dad, uh, uh-huh. starring Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was just looking into the camera. Now he's like, this holiday. First of all, I'm going to do a very good impression. Right. Well, you, I'm, but, I'm excited. Yeah. But should like, we tell everyone that we're not about to be joined by Bill Cosby so they don't get confused? Uh, not about, it, we're yeah. not about to be. In fact, and in fact, you know, I remember this. We had a there was a lot of back and forth discussion. I'm not going to say who was on what side, but we 
we, you know, because we do have guests sometimes, and that there was a hotly, it was a, de- it was very debated whether we were going to have Bill Cosby on as a guest because mm-hmm. there was a couple people involved that wanted him. They're like, oh, it's good notoriety, and then, and then, you know, I know like one person me uh-huh. that was saying like, no, I don't think we should do that. I don't think that that's, good. I don't think we should stoop to that kind of thing because I don't, Sound I don't like really, you. I don't really, I don't, I'm not down with what he did, and then some other people that were saying uh some other people that were saying like no i think it's all you know overblown and he's probably totally innocent and then no, this is person, the three of us you're talking and then, about and then one person was saying i don't i don't know i think there's enough evidence in this of me that it should probably <laughs> not not happen but the ad, the ad campaign for for Ghost Dad was uh, it's Emil Cosby. He's like, it's holiday season. <laughs> Want you to go see a new movie? And there's none of this. And then when he would say there's none of this, it would cut to uh, just a bunch of explosions. And then he go, and there's none of this. And it would cut to the, a shot of two people kissing, uh-huh. which, I mean, take that what you will from his mm-hmm. fucking life. Uh, and right. uh, was it was it and, consensual? Uh, it looked consensual. Um, yeah, he, he's, not he's not interested in that. Not, not interested in no. that. Yeah, exactly. And, they go, yes. and there's definitely none of this. And they would cut to a shot of one of the worm creatures from the movie Tremors. I don't know where they got the footage. <laughs> and then someone had overdubbed overdubbed the worm, uh, just like a human being going, oh, where, where, where? And it might have been Bill Cosby going, where, where, where? <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> they go like, this is a movie for the family, and it has awesome stuff like this. And uh, it would show a couple clips, and one of the clips... Is because uh, in Ghost Dad, he, he's he's a, he's a dead dad. Right. He's a ghost. Right. And I guess when he's first discovering the weirdness of being a ghost, there's a shot where he walks out onto the street and a bus comes and it would have hit him and killed him, but he's already dead. So he's 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 uh, intangible. And he's right in the middle of the bus, and the bus is going, and he looks, and coming straight towards him is a very elderly woman's crotch. And it cuts to a shot of Bill Cosby going, oh, no, I don't want to see that. And um, and he goes right into the woman's old crotch. So after, <laughs> after like, you know, explaining that this is a family film that has doesn't have explosions, mm-hmm. uh, uh, kissing, or giant right. monsters. He, he says, it's, it's fine for your family. There's just, just a movie about me uh, going face first into an old woman's vagina and getting <clears throat> to see all of it. Right. <laughs> well, she didn't know it was happening, so he's you know, into it. Yeah, she didn't know it was happening. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a Bill weird. Cosby move. Ghost. See, I, I remember it being... It's one of my first memories of a movie flopping and knowing oh. what a flop and kind of knowing all that about a movie when it came out. Well, like I knew did other you movies. Miss Leonard Part Six. Leonard Part Six was one of the biggest like movie I flops. Can't remember. Was that a flop? Time. I that thought was that was Cosby. after Ghost Dad. So Leonard Part Six was 1987 and Ghost Dad mm. was 1990. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, then no, it would have been Leonard Part Six then because I, I was aware of that. But Ghost, I don't for whatever reason Ghost Dad sticks out to me more as a well known complete failure and maybe it's because it's a movie i could have seen and chose not to whereas leonard part mm. six there's no way i was gonna oh, go this i saw leonard part six in the oh, theater. Did you? yeah well it was a family flick i'm well, sure you've it was. Seen the first five right so i had seen the first five was uh, the bit that they were that they were classified and you couldn't see them was that the yeah it was something <laughs> that he's like this real famous guy who had all these crazy adventures and I do like I remember actually like laughing a bunch at the very beginning. There's like a scene where um these like uh it's like the, the the story is there's some kind of villain. I don't remember much about the story, but there's a villain uh-huh. who can like make animals like do his will, like he can like do something and there's some guy that is in a car that he wants to kill, and at some point like the frogs, uh, this, there's it, all these frogs start jumping up towards the car, and he kind of like, like looking around. He's like, "What the heck?" And he's just like tons of just regular sized frogs, and then 
<laughs> they all the frogs go under his car and jump at the same time in unison, so it makes the car hop. <laughs> and it, it, they they push the car, and it was such a ridiculous thing that I thought it was pretty funny at the time. And then there's a scene where uh, Bill Cosby is trying to break through like a like the door of some kind of base, and it's just like a ridiculous amount of time, like 10 minutes of him throwing like grenades and shooting guns and like, just like jumping around and like just throwing all these crazy bombs to try and make it blow up. And then it just never, it doesn't do anything. And then at some point he's just very exhausted and goes like, Ugh, that's a thick door or something like that. And it wasn't that funny, but that that's, those are the only two things I remember from it. Other than that, there was a tie into that movie and it was some sort of video game that was like, it was like a console and a gun. I don't know, sort of like a Nintendo light gun sort of ripoff sort of thing. I don't know that it was made for the movie Leonard part six, but all the, all the marketing was tied into that movie. I think they like probably funded it. The action max from 1987 developed by worlds of wonder. Yeah. I, I, my mom bought me one at big lots. And I'd play it sometimes. It was, you know, fun for the $10 she paid. Did the game have Dana Plato in it? No, that's a different game. That okay. We talked about a year and a half ago. Oh, well. What's the name of that game? Night Trap. And she gets naked and masturbates on camera, right? No, that's, yes. that's just your, your memory. That's the secret mm-hmm. level. Your imagination. Mm-hmm. Well, I have, I have a drawing of, of it. I drew a, <laughs> a drawing of it. Did he show us that? Well, I have to take it down off the wall because it's framed. Uh, we, don't, you don't, we don't want you to have to yeah, take it out of yeah. the frame. You hung on to it for all these years. Yeah. Just I to, mean, I, I like to go look at it. It's just you just traced somebody out of a comic book and <laughs> pasted a head. Yeah. When I start to get bored or whatever, if, if, like, if there's like a dinner party happening at my house, I say, hey, uh-huh. hey, everyone, if you'll excuse me, I need to go look at my picture. <laughs> 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 then I come back about ten or twenty minutes later. When when you're coming back, are you wearing pants? Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> not the same pair, but <laughs> right, you put something on. It's not an animal. So, uh, you guys ready to get started here? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm glad that we talked about staying right on time with this. So we're yeah, we're, yeah, we're, totally. So, welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with I am Brian Camp. I'm uh, Mike Weeby, Part Seven. <laughs> I'm glad you identify as a sequel to one of the worst <laughs> movies, movies, emergency movies of all time. Uh, they're all ghosts. They're all a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, here's my here's my theory on doing an impression. As long as you uh-huh. take everyone else's impression and do more, <laughs> That's... that the better, the bigger the um, the bigger the version of the impression, the better it is. Right. So, <laughs> barely sounds like a person. <laughs> so this week we've got oh. three news stories, and then Mike has a new segment for us and get to know your podcast. Yeah, that's oh. right. Goddamn pretty, well, do pretty excited after the uh, Donald P. Belisario sons. Yeah, we're done with the Belisario sons. So as we enter the new year, as we ring in 2023. Yeah. So our first story comes to us from the BBC. The BBC, oh, the Bad Boys bad Club. Bad Boys Club. Finally, it's been too long since we visited the Bad Boys Club. It has been a long time. I yeah. guess it has been. Yeah, we, we uh, mm-hmm. got sidelined for a while. Mm-hmm. They probably quit reporting news for a while, and they're just now getting back to it. I bet, yeah. Like true bad boys. All their all their news is about is about the king and the World mm. Cup. Well, yeah. They're out. Are they still in it? No, they're out. Ah, there you I go. mean, by the time this airs, that'll have been over for like a week. No, nah, but- actually, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction. It will be so many tie games that it will still be running, oh. and there it will be. It will come down to the wire, and the final game will be on New Year's Eve. Guess guess what teams it will be. Uh, I'm going to say Zimbabwe and Uruguay. Mm-hmm. Close. Uruguay and Imaguay are going to go against each other. Head wow. to head. Head to head. And we'll all come down to one penalty kick. That's that's a soccer term. <laughs> I'll just say that someone will get rattled by... Uh, yep. The one team will get rattled by uh, the person the person in the audience uh, screaming out, <laughs> Baby! <laughs> what? Ah! Why would 
they be screaming that? I think you'll find out. <laughs> just let time just let let time go on. Back in episode <laughs> 81 and way back in episode mm. 2, we talked about mm. how stacks of badgers stacks have invaded of badgers. Real problem. Have invaded British cemeteries, which by the way, is, I I read this news all the time. I see American news only in England does this happen. Stacks of badgers have invaded British cemeteries, burrowed around graves until they collapsed, dug up bodies, and left local authorities perplexed over what to do. Mm. Now, the same thing is happening in Yorkshire, England, only it's happening with wild pigs. Pig bomb. Apparently, the pigs, which consist of a sow, a boar, and two piglets, have repeatedly dug up the ground around several graves. These are specific pigs is what I'm saying. This isn't like, because stacks of badgers just implies that there's uh, just like, you know, it's a proliferation right. a proliferation right. of, uh, <laughs> of badgers. <laughs> like, we don't know that it, this is like individual pigs. It is a family of four pigs. The mama pig, the daddy pig, and the baby pigs. And I would guess because this is in the UK, not here. So have they identified whether or not it is Glenn Beck and his family? <laughs> <laughs> They, they have not confirmed one way or the other. It's a fair question. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so the parish priest, Father Desmond Sexton, has described... <laughs> the parish priest, Father Desmond what? Sexton. I bet he has a lot of ribald adventures. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing his giant one-person nighty with a hat, walking into ladies with their tops exposed and <laughs> popping boners in his <laughs> fucking dress. Tent. It's okay. I'm a member of the clergy. Yeah. It's no, I need you to polish my scepter. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the pigs have invaded the cemetery, yeah. and Father Desmond Sexton has described uh, the pigs' desecration of the churchyard as horrendous, and he added that people visiting the graves of their loved ones have left very upset. The pigs don't seem aggressive, with one man claiming that he chased them away, but a local politician nevertheless claimed the pupils at a nearby school could be the pig's next target. A statement issued by local police asks anyone who sees the pigs to get in touch. Are they rooting Wait. around? Or are they digging up bodies? Like, what are they, Pigs don't... What they're they, rooting around, yeah. They're rooting around. They're tearing up the graves. Well, are they shallow graves? What's going on in, in Britain? That's that's my are question. They fucking on the graves? Oh, that's. I mean, there are there are two piglets. Mm, well, more than that, don't they have like several litters in one year? I don't know how pigs work. Oh uh, well, they're mammals, and so <laughs> thank you, Brian. You know, a mama it's... pig and a daddy pig love each other very much. <laughs> so what not... you're saying is they will not be laying eggs. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> they do they not will... have cloacas. Live birth, hair. No, I think that's I think that's why pigs are so. Such a problem is they will like two pig can produce like a hundred pigs in one season or something. Oh wow! They, so that's why there's a there is a documentary called called Pig Bomb. It's pretty good. You've probably seen it, areas that they they just root around. I don't. I just didn't know they could dig up a body. Now they'll eat a child. So his concern over Wait, the school. They're just gonna run up and eat a child. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kid's gonna walk out of school and just four pigs you know. just jump on him, start chewing mm -hmm. up his face. Is gonna Link. sort of uh, jump around for a second, right. but it, okay. I swear it comes back. Uh, fuck Twitter, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, like, obviously. I, I used to, I used to really like Twitter, and like right. I, so I like kind of was like ah, I like wrote a thing and said like, you know, hey, I'm not gonna get on here very much, but I still, you know, am like throwing up like ah, the band's playing here, or there, or whatever. But ever since Elon Musk has that fucking. That guy sucks. If you think Elon Musk is cool, you are the fucking lamest person <laughs> in the world. Like there is, I, I do not, I, I, I can't, um, I'm, it, 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 I can't even talk. It makes me so fucking mad. Like, what did he do? He's just the fuck. He's just the biggest Everything, loser on yeah. the fucking face. Of, not only what he's done to he spent Twitter, forty four billion dollars to get attention. Uh, first of all, <laughs> this is a joke that my mom wouldn't even make because right. it's so dumb. Right. So it doesn't even make any fucking sense. I'm mad as as comedy. I'm mad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said my pronouns are prosecute slash Fauci. What? They're not pronouns. He hates, is not how he hates, prosecution he hates works. The pronouns because. That's so woke when people say him, her, or she, she, her, 
or whatever, which like I can I can even understand people not getting that or old people like whatever. You, I'm not I'm not a big the, fan of like throwing right. that in my bio or whatever, but right. I, I'm, I don't care. Like what well, right. it, it's, it's something at at the very most you should be indifferent to it. You know? Right. Right. There's but, a reasonable, intelligent conversation that could be had least, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it doesn't fucking affect you. Who cares? Trans rights all the way. Anyway, right. but like, uh, like, let's just say you want to make fun of that. Okay. Like, I'll, I'll give anybody making fun of anything. One, that, that <laughs> the pronoun thing is very tired and hack at this point. Right. right. But not new news. Not new. There's no, there's no more like subject to be mined after that. Right. Mm-hmm. But what is. Prosecuting Fauci, that doesn't even make right. it just makes no sense. And two, we're still mad at Fauci. My mom yeah. hasn't complained about Fauci in a while. My mom, <laughs> famous, famous hater of Fauci. I thought you hated them. Anyway, Twitter fucking sucks. Hate it. And I went on there and I saw that and that made me mad. And then I yeah. scrolled a little bit down. And there was some fucking like Hunter Biden fucking laptop shit that was up there. And there was like a fucking picture. That it was some article of like, ah, look what's going on. It was like a, had like a fucking, like a child in a adult outfit in like a sec, it was sexualized. It was, I, it was something that like, I just did not need to see. And I'm right. like uh, upset that I saw it. Like it was something like I, I do not want. It was something unwanted in my feed of like a photograph that didn't, that had something that was clearly untowards that happened right before or after. And the, the snapshot image is like, oh, great. Now that fucking ruined my night anyway. Because they don't have moderation or this was an Elon Musk thing. This was like that. Well, this is, uh, that's the kind of thing that will pop up all the time now. Yeah, because yeah, there's the, no the, moderation. The, the discourse, there's no moderation. And like the discourse is like exclusively bent to like people arguing over bullshit when I only follow fucking comedians and right. stuff like that. But I will say there's sometimes back when I sort of enjoyed uh, this is where it comes back. There's this <laughs> guy on Twitter was a real a real funny thing where people were people were like, you know, why do people need assault rifles? And, and there was a big debate on twitter about that and then some guy was really mad about why he needs assault rifles it was jason isbell from uh the country he was like if you're part if you're arguing about the de- definition of an assault weapon today you're part of the problem you know what an assault weapon is and you know you don't need one and then some guys like legit questions like legit question for rural americans how do i kill the 30 to 50 feral hogs that run in my yard within three to five miles while my small kids play <laughs> and that is like a stupid like Twitter thing, they're like, ah, see, that's the kind of thing I kind of miss, you know? Seeing somebody yeah. uh, jump off about 30 to 50 feral hogs that run around. <laughs> it's a problem. They're all over the place, Mike. But I'm just wondering if the the two to five feral hogs are really that much of a danger. There, Four, there, are, there are hogs are very, very dangerous. How animals. so? Well, they, they're very territorial. They have very sharp tusks. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to guess, I've been looking that more people are hurt by hogs in a year and not counting pets. Okay. Like they're, they more people, the, the most dangerous undomesticated animal in America is the feral hog. And you can no count like spiders or shit either. Cause I'm sure it's a, it's a mosquito. They give everyone malaria. That's what killed uh, Robert Baratheon. Oh Yeah. The top yeah. 10 most dangerous wild animals in the USA, according to alcation.com. Well, I don't know about that. Sounds source. like it was written by an owl. So, <laughs> it's, right. It's mice, shrews, bulls, Al- <laughs> <laughs> alligators, cougars, coyotes, yeah. and wolves, spiders, scorpions, bees, and fire ants, bears, and the number eight is wild boars. Then to nine, which surprises me, is snakes. All things I would want to shoot with my assault rifle, my many, many assault rifles. And bees and shit like that. That's like, that's only if you're allergic to them, right? Yeah. If you get a little too close and fuck with the hive and breathe into it, then, you know, you may, you're, you're asking for some trouble. See, I think you can stumble on a boar, though, and they're in weird places. And they'll fucking I'm, just, yeah, fuck you up. I, you. I believe it. I'm not, I'm not, but I, it is, and it is a good to know that bees can hurt you because there was that thing called the beehive challenge going around <laughs> where it was, they, they dare you to get erect and stick your penis in a beehive. I don't think that was a real challenge. <laughs> I, 
It was real. I mean, it was uh, a real challenge. I challenged a lot of people to do it. That's right. I'm going to challenge Philip Pampers to send us a picture of the beehive challenge. <laughs> the beehive challenge? I feel like a lot of suicides are people uh, actually covering up the fact that their loved one died doing the beehive challenge. That's right. And they're they go so... like, oh, no, he committed suicide. He died of drugs. because it, right. it is embarrassing, I guess. And then the actual, and then the thing too is like a lot of times, like, they just have to burn the body because it's it's just stuck with an erect penis in a beehive on the end, and you don't right. like you can't a massively get massively swollen. Like it's too it's too big right. to close the funeral the 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 casket, you know. The special caskets with a with a with a sticking up a, a bump in the center to uh, just a yeah. beehive shape. Yeah, oh. that's maybe that's what the boards are going for. Maybe they're trying to dig up the honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, now we're getting somewhere. I think we solved the Desmond Sexton, Desmond Tutu Sexton. Right. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I did not know that there were hogs. I mean, I guess uh-huh. Game of Thrones should have taught me that there are hogs, feral hogs, and 30 to 50 feral hogs in, in medieval <laughs> England. And I guess I should have known that. I just did not know it was that big of a problem. And I didn't know that they rooted around and had sex in uh, in graveyards, much like teenagers of... Denton, Texas. So we've been told. If they if they didn't yep. want people having sex in the graveyard in Denton, they wouldn't have built it in the middle of town, okay? Exactly. That's what I've always it said. It is in the middle of town, isn't it? It's right really there on Fort Worth yeah. Drive. You used, to cut, yeah. they used to be able to cut through that. Yeah. Well, they don't do anymore. that anymore. I think it's all fenced off, isn't it? Well, it was fenced off before, but there was always an opening. And like at yeah. like midnight, if you drove by, there was always like some goth guy holding a Bible, like wandering out in the mist. It's very, it's very difficult for teens to get laid in Denton now. Mm-hmm. I'll take your word for that. I listen, I'm, I mean I'm only I I read I read a lot of YA novels. Mm-hmm. How how is the Divergent series? Mm-hmm. It's not as good as the Babysitters Club. <laughs> so our next story <laughs> comes to us from Psychology Today. Oh I, good. I'm gonna I'm gonna just this story is a little spacey, but mm-hmm. it might appeal to the fact that one of you is a registered sound bather and the other is a licensed quantum magician. So just well, keep that in mind as we go through this story. It, it sounds like the scientific community, at least the, the Western scientific community, is finally going to recognize finally. what people in our profession have to yeah. offer. So I'm excited for this, Kevin. Exactly. Well, let's, let's just see what happens here. The University of Virginia has the only accredited academic parapsychological program in the United States. Yeah, I was a guest speaker there last year. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, what do, what do you speak yeah. on? Well, I talked about uh, sound sound bathing in a in a post nine eleven environment. Wow! <clears throat> uh, now, three psychiatrists <laughs> in the parapsychology program are mm-hmm. challenging the conventional views of reality, and they say we need new paradigms for how to perceive everything. Now, it, okay, it's important to note here that psychiatrists are trained to distinguish between delusion and reality. And what they're saying here is that our modern views on reality have lost their flexibility, leading to a kind of mass delusion. The psychiatrists say that modern science has lost its curiosity and openness to anomalies and instead developed a stigma that skeptically ignores whatever it can't easily quantify. And these psychiatrists instead seek a reality and scientific paradigm that has a place for paranormal phenomena. Specifically, the psychiatrists seek a paradigm, and more specifically, they do mention that they seek government funding, that allows for research into yeah. near-death experiences, reincarnation, and extremely unlikely but meaningful coincidences. You know, like, uh, this isn't a, a, a meaningful coincidence, unless you're some kind of dumbass, but like the idea that, you know, Lincoln had a, a secretary named Kennedy, and Kennedy had a secretary named Mick Nixon. That's kind of you are exactly what they're you know, talking about. That is yeah, you are exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it, sounds, it, is, it sounds like <laughs> you. You're listen. This is a fucking thing. This is a problem with you. Your yes. paradigms. Your right. paradigms are extremely paradigmical, and that's what. <laughs> that's why you can't even paradonics. Dentistry, periodontical, periodontical, <laughs> right? Finally, the government's putting some money where it should. Right. Well, the government like isn't doing it. It's just a a call for the government to do this. Well, but, UVA is a government institution. But you know, in addition to near death experiences, reincarnation, and 
meaningful coincidences. Who knows? Maybe sound bathing and quantum magic right. are you know going to be included too? Because we we know those aren't cheap to research, right, guys? Not at all. Okay. No. And and one thing I, Kevin, that that I know, and I think Mike would agree with me on this is everyone is equipped with uh-huh. a third eye, and uh-huh. unfortunately. We've all been trained, and not we inclusive, because I think Mike and I have have learned a while back now uh-huh. that unless you consciously open yeah. that third eye, right, you're not going to see the world as it is. And this is what they're talking about. You have allowed uh-huh. the, the modern view, the Western scientific model, uh-huh. to I've seal this. that third. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're a part of it. To allow that third <laughs> eye to be sealed shut. Uh-huh. And until you until you make the effort, the work, and ex- those muscles, those muscles have atrophied, Kevin. Mm-hmm. You have to use those muscles. You have to open that third eye, and then you will see the world and the possibilities that exist before you. And you will finally see that at least at UVA, uh-huh. University of Virginia, oh, so, yes. science That's is controlled. It. Yes, science is a controlled by uh-huh. what is unfortunately a new way of thinking. But they would uh-huh. have you believe it's an old way of thinking. Your scientific model is the new way of thinking, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> the I, third my, so eye, I your thinker. third eye is 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 it's uh-huh. like it's like this modern reality. Okay. Walked up. Okay. And I, I excuse my language, but it went it walked up to your third eye and it passed gas on it. Yep. And some <laughs> of the fecal molecules, <laughs> the 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 fecal molecules went uh-huh. into your third eye uh-huh. and your third eye has swollen shut. Oh, and wow. it is covered with mucus and pus and fart gas. The uh, eyelashes uh-huh. have mm-hmm. fused together from uh-huh. inaction and it's swollen because you got you know micro- microbes fecal uh-huh. microbes covered in your in your in your third eye oh you don't want that dripping with spiritual pus spiritual pus is a is a great way to describe it and mm-hmm. if you were going to mm-hmm. open it it's going to be painful you're going to have to right. take each eyelid and uh and spread them apart slowly you'll probably hear it it'll make kind of like hear, a, yeah ooh. yeah a separating sound uh, let me let me i got one more sentence in this story okay. let me just read okay. that real quick sure so the psychiatrists end their claim with a promise that they have strong evidence, and they also request the grant from the National Institutes of Health. Well, it's the first time I've heard about a legitimate grant request, frankly. Finally, yeah. Yeah, finally. It's nice to hear. Finally, we're not giving out grants to, to quacks and rubes <laughs> and morons. Like, like who? Give me an example of who's getting a, a grant. Is a certain guy, a certain person. I'll, I'll just uh-huh. say person. Okay. And their pronouns are prosecute. Fauci. <laughs> it's good. We, do, we need we more make parapsychology departments. And they need to come hire us as speakers. I Well, that's true. We all have bachelor's degrees. Why don't we go and apply to the University of Virginia and then we can do the podcast while we try to get our PhDs in parapsychology? I'm not closed off to that. I'm not closed off to that either. You know, like the Ghostbusters people. have PhDs in parapsychology. I mean, yeah. we got a, we got a right. new dream. I do want to mention, like, I... I understand what they're trying to say, but I, I just, I try to comprehend being somebody at the National Institutes of Health and saying, okay, we have this pot of money that we give out every year for grants, and now we can't give as much to Alzheimer's research because we got to study reincarnation. And I just... But, uh, what, what, what do you think is going to happen to these Alzheimer's patients who are going to die after mm-hmm. wouldn't you wouldn't you don't you think their family would like to know where they're going to come back when they die right like like which kid yeah i mean well a uh, well, house any plant animal? or yeah. uh, an animal uh uh right. possibly a feral hog what right. about a cookie one of many feral hogs no a cookie's not an, a, a sentient object <laughs> oh, no see kevin um, you're you're making fun of something very serious <laughs> what about wait hold on but you say that but what about you know the the Punky Chips Ahoy uh, that had oy, a oy, mouth. Oy. Yeah, Punky Chips Ahoy. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> yeah, that had a mouth <laughs> and it had eyes and it sang. Yeah, well, specifically, it sang. It sang uh, like British street punk, and it would say oi, right. oi, oi. Right. Well, no, those are created. Mm-hmm. Those are those are actually false. They're made up. But unlike reincarnation. Uh... Well, I mean, you know, reincarnation is not a new idea. It's, it goes back. It goes back tens of years. The Buddhists have believed in reincarnation for a long time. 
And also more than tens of years. Shirley MacLaine was talking about it like 30 years ago, 40 <laughs> years okay, ago. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. She wrote about it in a book. I don't know. When. And, 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 and yeah. she made love to Frank Sinatra. So, okay. It, the government needs to keep funding things that are, you know, it's, it, it's what's out there right now. Like a long, a long uh-huh. time ago, people didn't know that water was good for you. But we figured that out with science. I think that water is actually water is actually really good for you, and you should yeah. drink it a whole bunch of the time. Yeah. I yeah. think people always knew water was good for no, you. No, they didn't. They didn't. Yeah, they knew that, that it was granted. around. They knew that uh-huh. it was. They knew that mm-hmm. it was cheap. That they didn't know that it was. Uh-huh. They didn't know that it was better for you than apple juice. Yep. Now yep. they know because of science. Uh-huh. And the thing is about the NIH spending this research money. Uh-huh. Unlike unlike your grandma, uh-huh. you know. The house plant might remember who you are. So, <laughs> yeah. wh- what are we going to focus on? I mean, that sounds hard, but I think that's if we're really talking about spending our money uh-huh. economically. Why don't we? Right. Why don't we spend it on the future and not the past? And I applaud the UVA for studying mm-hmm. sub subjects and for hiring me to do sound bathing in a post nine eleven world. And I also <laughs> went and taught a clinic uh, one time. It was a catabolibus clinic. <laughs> Catoblipas. <laughs> One more reference I don't. I just want to let the listeners know I don't know what that means either. All right, so our next story comes to us from Yahoo News. Yahoo. I was gonna say Yahoo's lost a shitload of money, right? A brand from our youth that has turned into yeah. just garbage. They spent a billion dollars to buy a uh, Tumblr and then mm. basically alienated all the users, got rid of all the tits which alienated even more users. And then three, they were bought by Verizon. And then three years later, Verizon sold Tumblr for $3 million. Jeez. Wow. Like it wow. was just a lot of dumb business decisions because they wanted social networking and uh, just blowing out money. And they had, now they're owned by Verizon and I, not nobody uses Yahoo anymore, really. Yeah. But Ooh. nevertheless, this story is some solid reporting. Or at least reprinted from somewhere that has solid reporting. Yeah, yeah I think it actually came from the AP. <laughs> okay. But because uh, I found the same story in the Washington Post, but because I tried to do, I'm going to just, I'll point this out now. I tried to do some research as to like, and then what happened? And nobody has followed up on this amazing yeah, story. That's always frustrating when uh, you want to find out more and things yeah. just kind of end. Mm-hmm. So everyone, Mike, you travel a lot. So you'll know this. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that traveling, especially air travel, can be frustrating. But a 20-year-old man by the name of John Joseph Thomas Green has taken his frustration a little too far. Four names. John Joseph Thomas Green was scheduled to fly from Salt Lake City, Utah to Denver, Colorado, when he was informed that his flight was canceled. He seems to have taken this part in stride. The inciting incident for John Joseph Thomas Green occurred when the uh, clerk can we just call him John Green. I don't I'm his name is his name is pissing Brian pointed it out and his name is really <laughs> pissing me off. That mm-hmm. is a willful just asshole thing of like no it's how it's it's how I prefer it to be said. Is it too stereotypical for me to ask the question or at least make the assumption that it's a Mormon guy? Well, I, feel like- I- I, I'm pretty sure he's not Mormon. We'll see how oh, okay. the story goes. Well, you never know. Okay. <laughs> the inciting moment for John Joseph Thomas Green occurred when the clerk at the ticket counter told him he wouldn't be able to buy any same day ticket for Denver and he would have to just wait until tomorrow. At that moment, John Joseph Thomas Green allegedly exited <laughs> the airport where he forced a driver out of an SUV and sped away. He then crashed the SUV into a silver car made a U-turn, and then smashed into a BMW SUV. Next, he exited his SUV and allegedly attempted to force the driver out of the BMW, but her seatbelt prevented this. So he got back in (laughs) his original vehicle, struck another car, and narrowly (laughs) missed a building before abandoning his vehicle. He then carjacked a Dodge Durango and entered the highway and hit another five cars. (laughs) (laughs) When police uh, finally caught up with him, he'd abandoned the Durango and was throwing large rocks at cars, hoping that one would stop if he damaged it. Just then, one of his rocks broke the windshield of a Toyota Tacoma, which he tried to carjack when it pulled over. But that's when police were able to arrest him and end his Grand Theft Auto-esque crime spree. All in all, it took about 45 minutes. It's not clear which felonies the man was charged with, 
But injuries to the people he hit were only minor. And John Joseph Thomas Green Mm. allegedly told an arresting officer that he was on PCP, cocaine, and meth. He's almost an INS hero. I mean, (laughs) I hate to say it. Because I will say, like, I... Yes, this this, this is bad behavior. Uh, (laughs) We all agree. I've never done that. And I don't think I would do that over an airline flight thing not working out. Uh That being said, I have been that angry over something lesser (laughs) than that. Yes. Like I, I, I have actively worked in therapy to control uh, rage issues. And it's a weird rage that comes out at weird times that I, I believe I may have, uh, it may be some learned behavior from uh, my childhood but I, I, there's been moments where, and I feel like I'm way better at it, but there has been times where mm-hmm. I cannot get Photoshop to uh-huh. let me switch the thing to a second layer oh, or yeah. I can't copy paste a thing where I've gotten so mad that none of that sounds unreasonable. Right. Like that, everything that he did, I could see myself doing when, when I, I've found that uh, an Adobe Premiere file has deleted everything <laughs> and I cannot find the file. And I know that that's insane and I know right. that that's not right. <laughs> to this day, I mean, and I still, it is, the, and here's, it, like, it's mostly under control, but occasionally, I will have to rush to write down something uh-huh. uh, real quick, you know, some information. Uh-huh. I just need to jot down a number, an address, a phone number, a, uh-huh. a whatever. And I will grab the nearest pin and the nearest pin will not write. It will be out of <laughs> and uh-huh. 100 times out of 100, no matter how good of a mood I've been in, that pin <laughs> is angrily thrown across the room <laughs> And the word fuck has been yelled with sheer abandon. Mm -hmm. People used to say this a lot about working with Bob Odenkirk when he Uh would do this, that he would say this a lot. But I learned this 100% from my father. My father didn't say fuck. He would say, God damn it. (laughs) And even saying it like that, like I kind of like grit my teeth together. It's it's a problem. It's the thing. And I got to say, I fucking understand this guy a little bit. Mm -hmm. And granted, yes, cocaine, PCP. Both stimulants. Meth also. You know what? Sometimes a day just as a way of fucking getting the worst out of you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I think we all, we can, he's a hero, not necessarily because of what he did, but he's a hero because of what he did. Like it's, <laughs> it is, there is, there is something okay. very compelling about, because yeah, I, like you, Mike, I, I recognize that level of frustration where, you yes, you throw something as hard as you possibly can at whatever it is. You don't care if anything breaks. Like I, yep. I have caused so much damage to my own property yes. by throwing tools at things yes. when something unimportant uh-huh. didn't work quite right. Yeah, right. It is, and it's a very rare thing. It is, and it's, for me, it's gotten more and more rare. And it's the thing mm-hmm. that I don't, I don't like hearing my father's angry yells come out of my mouth. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. And I've heard that come out of my mouth yeah. far too many times. Mm-hmm. I don't like the fact that I have made animals be afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, the anger's not directed there. I've never, and I've never right. directed that kind of anger at an animal, but I've freaked out at a computer uh-huh. to where animals are afraid that there's something wrong with you know right. and like i don't i don't i'm not i'm like not proud of that but see i think this like they ran out of the room and then wouldn't come back in yeah yeah they can pick and, up on that and, stuff and in retrospect i should have taken that rage and simply walked outside and carjacked some people <laughs> right i right. think that would have been just as fine mm-hmm. god bless him i get it yep i kind of I hate his four names, but I feel bad for him. I do have one. How close did you get to carjacking when your uh, Adobe Premiere file was deleted? I don't know about that. I one time years ago, uh-huh. a really long time ago, I dented the shit out of the door of one of my cars because I lost my keys skateboarding. So great. That is <laughs> classic. That is yeah. such a wonderful 
and and very identifiable. I yeah. I absolutely yeah. understand. I have yes. And the and the words "God damn it" were screamed out. Well, wait, how old were you? I mean, I was an adult. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't in the last ten years. Okay, I was gonna say there was something about being like anywhere between like fifteen and twenty, where you, I would just lose things. Like it, I still lose things. I still get upset about them. Thank God for like Apple AirTags and shit oh, yeah. like that. That's a real game changer. But God damn, I just there's a there's a fiery angry demon that is as mad at myself as anything else that's happening and and i i've i've done my best i've been in therapy every week Uh for the majority of my life and it still pokes its head out every once in a while we're glad you're making progress now i do have one more question for you it might set you off and i just i want to prepare you for that okay i'm fine when we etch john joseph thomas's thomas green's name into the ins plaque of heroes do we put all four names or no god damn it no <laughs> yeah. you, get, you get two names Mm-mm, right you, well if it's a formal like whatever you can put the person no because he uh, you don't get four and you don't get four first names okay you don't get four and that's too many first names green isn't a first name how do you know named green i know power ranger didn't he die recently? I know the Power oh, Ranger. Yeah. yeah, the green one R.I.P. died. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of weird, and it's kind of rude uh, that you would mock his death. Right. Why do you think that's funny, Kevin? Uh, I'll I'll be sure to etch him onto our hero's plaque. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not a hero. What? He's not, he's he's not a dead. hero. He's a Power Ranger. Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought... He's not a hero. They signed up. They they knew the job they signed up I for. I see. He still saved right. the galaxy countless times. Uh, he, he did it to get pussy in bars. Well, that's understandable. So, Mike, I believe you have a story for us in Get to Know Your Podcast. Oh, yes, this is an actual Get to Know Your Podcast episode. And we'd like to, on the segment Get to Know Your Podcast, we like to talk about things that we bring up that you might not, might not know about. This was actually requested by Mark Ryan. Uh, He requested Mm. requested that we do an episode on West of the Rocky. (laughs) Art Bell! Nice! Uh, The great. Uh, Art the Bell. great Art Bell. And I feel like people probably know who he is, but it, it is of a time that, you know, he died back in 2018, but he had not been on the air too much for a while. But back in the 90s mm. and into the 2000s, Art Bell was a AM radio mainstay. He was on hundreds of radio stations that were coast to coast which was the name of his 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 program was called coast to coast am well first of all my experience with art bell was i was probably in the in the late 90s somebody said like you know you now that your band's going on tour do you listen to art bell i said well who's that and he told me that oh man they talk about ufos they talk about ghosts they talk about (laughs) bigfoots they talk about everything that you care about the only things you care about and they were this person was right uh-huh. and i had to look around a little bit and and immediately i i found them and uh every night uh five nights a week and then they would do reruns most of the times on saturdays and i believe on sundays uh art bell would be on the radio and it was a, it was a, a show that he would have guests to talk about stuff and he would have a open caller line where anyone anybody could call in and art would let them go and they would it, until I heard him many time uh, cut off a person whose conspiracy theory uh, would go on and be entertaining, and then that person would immediately run into uh, the place that many conspiracies conspiracy theories go. They would start blaming the Jews, and oh. Art Bell would always immediately at that point go like, "I don't like where this is going," and cut them off. Yeah. Whereas on the other end, Art Bell would let people go on and on who were talking about how aliens lived in their penis or whatever. <laughs> Something mm-hmm. <laughs> things that made absolutely no sense. Art would love it and have them uh-huh. kind of go on and on. But he had a very straightforward radio voice, a very yeah. like kind of a classic radio voice, sort of deep, and he would not wink, but would entertain all kinds of crazy subjects, you know. That would come on, and um, he was, I believe, where was he based out of the 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 high desert? I think like Las Vegas or somewhere, Las Vegas, somewhere in Nevada. Laughlin, Nevada. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, he was never he never was 
he was never making fun of the people that were on. Like, wasn't his bit that he took, he not only did he let people kind of go and talk, but he, he, he lent some credibility to all of it. He was never poking fun at the person who believed in lizard people or, yeah. right, you know, breatharians or any of that stuff. Right. He would give them a place to uh, give them a place to talk and never really gave them pushback. He would ask questions. He would probe occasionally. Occasionally things would come up and he would have to question the credibility of it. But unless they got into stuff like he, he you know, unless they got into, I'd say, like racial politics and things like that, he never gave really any pushback. Um, uh, and which he did. Like at one time he had he had this guy on. Uh, I forget the dude's name, but he wrote a. He wrote this book called The Turner Diaries that are kind of this like oh, manifesto. Yeah, that guy. It's, a, it's a fictional tale right. about the um about a civil war that happens in the United States in the future and it's a, like a big race war. William Luther Pierce. Yeah. Oh wait, Andrew McDonald was the name he wrote under though. Linked to Columbine, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And linked okay. linked to a great number of uh white supremacist kind of groups. Yeah. But he had that guy on right. and that, that guy was kinda of going off thinking that he had an ally there and, and Art Bell was like, uh, I'm gonna cut you off because I am uh, married to a non white person, you know, I'm married to a Filipino and uh and the problem the problem that I think that this is gonna be sort of a thesis, but since we're already kind of talking about it, like the problem with conspiracy is that Art Bell was able to present all of it in a way without mocking it, but it also was clearly somehow entertainment. Right. Whereas when uh, the, the Coast to Coast AM taken over, but this guy George Nori came mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. and George Nori is kind of, he was initially, he was kind of doing Art Bell, but then he kind of fell into, you know, having Alex Jones on, which the, at the time, you know, there, there was a point in time when Alex Jones wasn't that far away from some of this stuff, right. you know, the, 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 the lines were a lot thinner and George Norrie kind of took Art Bell's sort of showmanship and fun and entertainment value of it and pushed it more towards these are facts and right. you know by simply kind of leaning way more leaning just a couple steps over from the lizard people and the ghosts and the bigfoot stuff into the conspiracy and the alex jones and the and the pizza gates and and while george nori is still has a, a foot firmly into you know what i would call the fun of extraterrestrial life and stuff like that he still traffics enough in that that that, that there's a very much a dividing line and he's also just like not his voice isn't as his voice isn't as soothing right his like late night voice isn't as as nice yeah everything that's great about post midnight broadcasting it's everything you would want a voice coming out from nowhere to tell you the the secret dark things it lets your mind wander because it's late at night and you're thinking about that and it's a thing that doesn't really exist like even george noise doing stuff now who listens to the the terrestrial radio much anymore at right. all you know yeah. this was a thing that was so special because it was just it just kind of came on it's just a nice thing about driving through the night mm-hmm the, the world's a lot spookier and mysteries are a lot greater and right. everything that you were hearing was a lot, a lot better, uh, a lot, a lot more open to your mind was a lot more. Ba- basically you weren't a closed off Kevin. What? Mm-hmm. Closed off Kevin. That's Dark your, Bell. that's your garbage pail kid with his sealed yep. up third eye, all covered <laughs> in spiritual pus. This is not right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I like what you're talking about, Mike, when you are talking about George Norrie, well, I don't think I listen to as much as Art Bell, but I do recall, and maybe this is the difference, is that that Art Bell asked questions, but it seemed like his only goal was to help somebody who called him who probably wasn't very good at telling a story or maybe wasn't very good at explaining themselves. He just asked questions to help them along with what they wanted to talk about. But very there was never so. there was never a challenge to it. And he never he never right. vouched for the information. He never yes. drew con- he never said, well, if that's true, then this. He never did the, and that's right. maybe what George Norrie was doing was saying, okay, now I'm going to take this information. I'm going to assume it's factual and I'm going to, we're going to talk about what implications are there. And I think that's where yeah. maybe yeah. it went astray from yeah. being fun to like, oh, this is, like people believe, it's weird that people believe as much of that as they do. Exactly. And I never thought that was going to happen. Yeah. 
there was definitely some people like, oh, that's clearly an insane person calling in to Art Bell. But then there were people that like, I don't believe this, but I am having so much enjoyment listening to it. Right. Like it's so good. And it's and and not only enjoying it, it was opening my mind up to like, oh, what if there was a you know, a black eyed children that were roaming around asking people to come inside and then disappearing in a puff of smoke, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of like if somebody just came onto a show, like you'd never heard of The Legend of Zelda, you never played The Legend of Zelda, and somebody's just explaining the world of The Legend of Zelda, Art Bell would be like, well, tell me more about what are these Octoroks? You yeah, know, he's yeah, just yeah. kind of asking leading questions for you to fill in the blanks, where George Norrie is like, so the Octoroks, they're at war with the Ganons? Yeah, well, that would be like the Octoroks, they're, they're actually... They're Democrats. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Octoroks, you know, they could be angels. Have yeah. you thought about that? Right. Well, you know, and the other thing too about George Nori is like, I remember listening to him because Art Bell wasn't on. There wasn't really an alternative, but it just, my, I couldn't put a finger on it. Why? But I just like became less interested. Yeah. And it wasn't, I never like noticed that things were starting to go right wing. And keep in mind, like, you know, this is a long time ago that George Nori, for the most part. So George, like, let me, let's just get back into the career. I'll get back okay. into the career. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Art Bell, he was uh, born in North Carolina on June 17th of 1945. And uh, he was always interested in radio. He became a licensed amateur radio operator, uh, ham operator. And in, 19, in the 60s, he was in the Air Force. And he was a medic in the Vietnam War. Oh, he was stationed oh. for a short time at a hospital in Da Nang, Vietnam. And he witnessed some of the effects of war firsthand, something he did not like to talk about or recall even decades later. At some point, he actually organized a thing about uh, getting people out of, like post-Vietnam, getting refugees out of Vietnam. After leaving the service in 66, he was uh, on different radio stations in the States for a while before moving to Okinawa, where he worked as a disc jockey for six years. And there, this is very interesting, he set the Guinness Book of World Records by staying on the air without sleeping for five days and nights. Wow. We later not- write that this extreme sleep deprivation was a strange experience. It's something he would never do again. And he said that he would go about his normal routine, such as walking to the refrigerator or taking a break. And it was as if he was floating around in a different world and things seemed unreal. He also, and this is from a different, uh, I, I don't have the idea. This is uh, one article I have in front of me, but he also has another Guinness Book of World Records about staying on the radio for the longest time while also being on a seesaw. Wow. Is that, Stick didn't... that in your pipe and smoke it, oh. Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> I thought you were going to get after, oh, I can't remember the youngest Brady kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Did they try and do that? They set a seesaw record. Yeah. Fuck you, Oliver. <laughs> Cindy. No, before it was before Oliver. It was Cindy and Jan. Bobby. Cindy and Bobby. While working at a rock station in Anchorage, he learned about our Amerasian children stranded in Saigon the final days before the U.S. pullout in 75. Bell spoke about it on air and, and had asked listeners in Alaska to send in donations. The money allowed chartering of a Douglas DC-8 to fly to Vietnam and rescue 120 orphans. Oh, wow. Who were brought uh-huh. to the United States. Good for him. Uh, so he started doing these talk shows and he, he had a couple jobs and then realized very quickly that he just regular kind of political talk radio realized he didn't want to do that. So he kind of abandoned all the regular stuff in favor of, you know, conspiracy theories. And, Uh uh, but, and then even then after, um, and he was doing conspiracy theory stuff, but then after the, uh, the Oklahoma bombing, he kind of decided that he was going to even like lay off, the conspiracy government stuff and really lean into the paranormal, the occult, UFOs, proto-science, pseudoscience stuff. And maybe that's a little bit of what that is. Like if, if we separate conspiracy theory from that stuff, even though we, even though we tend to put those together, we tend to put conspiracy theory with those subjects. And I think maybe we need to kind of put mm-hmm. them, put them over. Right. Um, right. He, he kind of blew up around the same time as, the X Files and Twin Peaks, and he kind of, kind of, I feel like he kind of coincided with popular cultures. Like now, like all this stuff is very, you know, like every other every other housewife probably listens to a podcast about ghosts or the paranormal mm-hmm. and right. stuff like that. Certainly, news but, podcast. And, and and that's not to right. say that you know, I, I we were the first that were into that, but I do kind of remember feeling. 
there, there weren't that many other people in my friend group who were actively trying to find out about, you know, the difference between Nordic aliens and gray aliens and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't as like common knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, Art Bell was a little bit of kind of like laid the groundwork for a, you know, pre-internet American okay. enthusiast of that, of that circle to kind of like have a common groundwork of this one thing that you could be from here or there and kind of, and kind of, like and have a knowledge and there was sort of like art bill listening parties and stuff like that in certain cities and stuff and he ended ended up being actually a a guest star later on a next files episode sort of version of himself in the beginning in late 96 bell was criticized for reporting rumors that the comet hail bop was being trailed by a ufo some speculated that members of heaven's gate group committed mass suicide based on the rumors that he aired but actually when they went into it and played he had to like go find those episodes and replay them and he actually like was one of the first people to publicize that there was not an alien companion following hail bop he they, nice. i guess he talked about it and talked about that it wasn't a thing that was actually happening so you can't blame art for that no not on him he was married like four times he was kind of one of those dude he got like a the last lady in his life uh it was a good like 30 year age difference there mm-hmm. on age got a, from the Philippines there. Um, but then were all his wives Filipino? No, two of them were, one was Japanese and one was American. Okay. So there was this really weird, and I remember this happening. Uh, there was a weird gnarly thing that went down where he just disappeared off the air and people like the, not the internet, because there really, really wasn't an internet to talk about it at this time, but people were very, the buzz was it something nefarious had happened to him by the government. And um, it turned out that his son's substitute teacher kidnapped his son. Right. And try and like tried to give him AIDS. He had AIDS. And it was this really weird fucking gnarly thing that like kind of it is weird. I, I think I have to say kind of really like um, a thing that negatively affected his life from then on out. Oh, it I, was, can't, it, I can't imagine a way. That well, that I mean like but... in a, in a really hard way, like I don't think that there was ever any kind of recovery, you know, oh, like, okay, yeah. and this, this happened in 2000 and did, um, did he get super reclusive, Mike? Yeah, he got really, really reclusive because of it. And here's the other thing that that kind of the other bad thing that happened. There were some lawsuits because these other radio hosts, because he didn't want to talk for obvious reasons, did not really want to talk about that story. And um, these radio hosts found out just scant details of the story and claimed that it was Art Bell that did that to his own son in some way, shape, or form, accused Art Bell of that, and right. he sued them and won the lawsuits. But it was this thing that really like just kind of rocked him to his core that, that he would have his name applied to that sort of thing. Was his son okay? I don't know. I can't... I haven't... Re- I, that was a thing that... I've, I looked into that, and yeah, it's not super clear what happened with his son. Like. And it was kind of crazy, like, later on, like, Art Bell, like, uh, about his son, there was, like, a quote that I read that, like, no, he was like, my son is back and he's with us. I can't say that he's okay. I pray that he will be one day, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Art Bell talked about his son being suicidal quite a bit for, you know, really having to grapple with that stuff. Yeah. Um. So he left for a while just to take care of his family he also had his wife of 15 years, Ramona Bell, died unexpectedly at 47 of an acute asthma attack. And then when Art Bell died, it was of a cocktail of a lot of drugs that he was kind of on. Some of them, you know, a lot of pain pills and stuff like that. He had a real bad back from yeah, falling from a telephone pole when he was oh. a kid. And that was kind of one of the reasons he got off of the air. But he, he wrote a couple books. The Quickening! That <clears throat> Highlander! Of, about how no, it's not about the Highlander. About it's mm-hmm. called the quickening. Today's trends, tomorrow's world. About how everything is accelerating too fast. Knowledge is accelerating. Technology is accelerating. He wrote a book called The Source: A Journey Through the Unexplained, uh, The Edge: Man's Mysterious Past and Incredible Future, and then he co-authored a book with alien abductee Whitley Strieber called The Coming. Global Superstorm, which was the basis for a popular movie, The Day After Tomorrow. Nice. I had no idea. Awesome. Not a good movie, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and apparently like they they did not uh george nori and him were not super close that they had a lot of disagreements but george nori was very broken up over his death he had a number of shows though like afterwards he kind of like turned his just workflow way down where he would do ghost to ghost remember that all just about just ghost stories on the show on coast to coast the ghost to ghost episodes were the best ones. Yeah. They kind of eventually compiled those into a thing. He had a show called Art Bell's Dark Matter. He had uh, Somewhere in Time. He had Dreamland as well. I do remember Dreamland. But I wanted to just go in some of the best stories that I remember. It's so funny because in a pre-internet world, I remember hearing about all of these stories without ever actually hearing them until years later. So Ghost to Ghost was his Halloween tradition for a while. And it was um, just stories, all call-ins, people calling in, telling stories. And man, you know, yes, every sixth to seventh person seemed like a, a whacked out schizophrenic. But a lot of these other people were so dead on and their stories were so not over the top, but just just sincere enough that they driving alone and listening to that would make your night the, the best night drive of all time when you get a good ghost story. There was a story that I heard about for years and that uh-huh. I never, and I'm, I actually just found, like when I found it, I was like, oh shit, I, I don't need to listen to the whole thing. But this guy faxed in this guy, Mel Waters. Uh-huh. He, he, went, he said to Arpa, there's a mysterious hole that happened to possess in his Washington home's backyard. It was a bottomless pit to be exact. He'd been using it to dispose of rubbish for years, wondering why it never filled up. And he did this amateur experiment with a weighted fishing line that revealed the hole was of an unimaginable depth. It began, so began a certified classic that spawned several more exchanges. And it was just a, the thing where the, like, all these strange noises and items would get pulled up, things would go down and never come up. No matter how much rope he would put down there, it would just never, never end. Um, and he was a fisherman. He was like a like a shark fisherman, and had all this experience in trying to main to determine depths on ocean mm-hmm. floors and stuff. Uh-huh. And none of that equipment would work. It was just this like bottomless pit. Oh, we can have a link to that as well to, okay. to that. Listen, twenty one year old madman Markham. He was tracked down by Art after the host read a news item about the arrest of a man whose science experiment cut out the power, a whole town's power supply. As the call continues, Michael reveals he's accidentally created a time machine. For added intrigue, Markham's arresting officer decides to chime in with a call of his own. <laughs> the way the story unfolds makes it an essential listen. It's also an example of Art's expert hosting skills at their peak. The open lines had a lot of the, the show's highest peaks over a few years. Bell asked for contributions from aliens stranded on Earth, time travelers, witches, vampires, and various callers claiming to be the Antichrist. Those were really good. I remember hearing a bunch of Antichrist calls that were fucking wow. great. I don't think I ever uh, heard often those. Often unsettling, frequently hilarious. The number of contributions received each time is a demonstration of the nighttime psyche. Didn't he have a time traveler line like that at any time someone claiming they were a time traveler could call? Like it was a hotline almost. Maybe. I, don't oh, know. I think so. Yeah. I think he did. Yeah. He definitely had like a lot of like the most famous names at the time, like Ed, remote viewer Ed Dames. Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking his name. Bob Lazar. Who is Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar is a guy who actually has kind of gotten. I, I remember him from the Art Bell days. And then like recently he was on Rogan after nothing for so long. And he's actually like a total fucking kook. On Rogan? I'm shocked. Yeah, he claims he worked in Area 51 and has all these sketches and and uh, diagrams right. of how UFOs mm-hmm. work and and anti gravity machines and stuff like that. Malachi Martin, he's a priest, whatever the priest Francisco. I thought he was a Father Malachi Mar- Martin. Father Malachi, that's yeah. right, Father Malachi Martin, and he was uh, he was a pretty good guest. He had an ap- academic background and a and a theological background and his stories were all about him fighting and battling demons and exorcisms that he'd gone (laughs) and he was like the premier guy one of my favorite episodes and i haven't found it on here um but i was driving i believe from santa fe new mexico to dallas one night at denton and uh there was this guy that was just a first caller line and he had him on for like an hour and a half and the guy was telling a story 
about how he was a time traveler. Oh, from John this, Teeter. Well, I don't know if this is a story because I know there's a couple of time travels, and this was one that I don't see. Like whenever I see people talking about the best episodes, they don't talk about this one. That this guy figured out that aliens were coming back into time, like greys were coming all over the timeline and setting up these weather control devices in order to terraform the earth to a climate that was more like theirs. And these humans were time traveling. This guy was a time traveler that was coming, that was following them around in, in time to try and find where they had set up these terraforming situations and destroy them. And that they first became of these aware of these aliens in like the year, I don't know, I can't remember, like 2039 or whatever. And he had this crazy story about how and it slowly unfolded about how the world kind of figured out that there were these aliens and they, they, and they called, they ended up calling the aliens the MIM because there was this weird sound that they were getting from, it started off with them catching a sound of like a MIM, MIM and realizing okay. like, oh, uh, it was some sort of weird signal that it was accidentally creating and it was just called the MIM for a long okay. time. And then at some point they realized it was these aliens that so got tied up and it was the best because i remember like an hour and a half into it like art bell just started laughing kind of broke he's just asking questions and completely serious and just broke character and goes like you know you might be making this up but this is so good and so well researched <laughs> that like you've done so much work to creating this mm -hmm. story and it was I mean, it was one of those things where it was like such a detailed story and there was not a single question that Art Bell couldn't throw at him that he couldn't immediately answer oh, with wow. like and it was like the story like the timeline of all the stories made complete sense cuz usually when they get the schizophrenics on it yeah. would get very convoluted and this guy just made sense from beginning to end I don't know. I think that the you know the point of a lot of get to know your podcast is that we're referencing these very specific things from a specific time because uh -huh. they stood out back then, you know, and right. they were kind of weird back then. And I can't think of anything more more perfect than Art Bell that was such a weird low key influencer on uh, the stuff that ultimately has become the podcast. The International News Service. So, Art Bell, wherever mm -hmm. you are, on the high astral desert, we here at the INS team take our hats off to you, Kevin. <laughs> if I had a hat, it would be off. And that is all. Awesome. So, that wraps up another week of the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com. Remember, just because you're having a near-death experience, there's no reason you shouldn't tell the angels and demons you meet all about INS. Check out the INS merch store at Redbubble and our Patreon. We'll see you next week. On the high desert. Good art, Bill. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.